Good morning guys. Focus still on the ramp, still doing some work on it. Um, I think today we're gonna get on and do the, the fuel pump. Uh, get it out of the way with, so I can get it off the ramp. So I'll just show you the things that we'll need to do. This is the tank, there's no access from above like there is on most vehicles. So you have to drop the tank to get the fuel pump out. Uh, so there's a few clips to get this heat shield out of the way with. Uh, there's a couple of pipes for your, for your fill and for your vent. Which you can get up on here. I've got these clips here, you'll have to, to break by the looks of it. So we'll chill them off and replace them with some Jubilee clips. And then there's um, a couple of push connectors just up there. And then hopefully, should be just a case of a couple of bolts for the straps. And there's one just up there. And then we'll be able to get a, a jack underneath it to support it, drop it down, disconnect from the top, and then pull it down all the way. So I'll get these all these hoses off out the way with, get this heat shield out of the way with first. Um, it's a little bit tight under here and a little bit dark, so you won't be able to see much. Um, but yeah, we'll get this tank off and um, we'll start replacing the fuel pump. All right, so we've got these clips off here. As you can see, they're like them reusable crimp clips. Oh, I didn't know that on that one because the the crimp bit is around the other way. So I couldn't actually see it. So I thought they're actually ones that are like one time use only, um, but it turns out they're reusable ones. So what I've done is this one here, I just managed to get a screwdriver behind it and then used the, the tin snips just to cut it off. As I say, they are reusable ones, but I think I might just um, replace them with Jubilee clips anyway. Get a nice firm grip with them. So they're off. The pipes up here are disconnected from the jar charcoal canister, so there's two pipes there. Uh, take them down all the, the heat shield and um, just bent that out of the way. Uh, put some WD-40 on the three volts and got a transmission jack underneath the fuel tank. So hopefully I can now whiz them bolts out and drop it enough so I can get to the top and disconnect the top. Right, I've got the ramp or the tank dropped down enough for me to get to these two connectors. There's one pipe and one electrical connector. Uh, yeah, so we'll get them off. The ramp was slightly in the way, and um, so I've had to shift the fuel tank that way. And also the filler pipe on the other side of the tank was um, hitting the subframe. Um, so I'm hoping that I can take these pipes off and then just drop it in from or drop it down from here easy enough um, but if not I might have to take that pipe off the trouble is I've got over half a tank of fuel in there so it's um I think I've got over half a tank of fuel in there so it's going to be a bit on the tricky side anyway we'll get this pipe off we'll get this um wire and clip off and then we'll try and drop the tank Well, just to recap uh, what I've done so far, because it might have been a couple of seconds for you guys, it's been about 20 minutes of struggle for me. So, these two breather pipes that are up here disconnect from the charcoal canister. You see, there's one there, there's one there. Um, I've had to disconnect the main fill pipe from here. Um, because it didn't clear the subframe, as you can see it's quite close and then it's just a connection at the top here for the, the breather or overfill whatever that pipe is obviously the two, the two bolts for the, for the mounts 
and then on this side if I just come under instead of undoing the pipe off the top there there are actually two connection points just up there which are a lot easier to get to which I don't know how but I've managed to oversee them once um, and then that's just the electrical connection up there and that bolt there so we are pretty much ready to drop it now I am fighting the exhaust pipe and the ramp here as well as not trying to spill any fuel out of the, the fill tube so it's um We'll see how we get on, but I'll put you down for a second and I'll come back to you in a second. Oh, well, we've got a gaping hole now where the tank used to be, which is awesome. That was a bit of a struggle to be honest with you on this ramp, um, mainly because I was fighting exhaust, I was fighting the ramp just there, and also my transmission jack didn't then want to go low enough for it to then wheel from underneath uh, so it's a bit of jiggery pokery but we got there in the end and the tank is now out so what i need to do now is just smack that with a hammer and a punch or a bit of wood or something just anti-clockwise and it's like um, a screw um, and then that bit comes off and we can get access to the pump all i did do was I took this plastic clip off or the um, pipe off just purely because that was hitting the the subframe as you can see I've sort of damaged that one a little bit it's a little bit kinked on the kink side that should be like that and I put a bit of tape around the fill and that because I always get a face full of fuel every time I tip the tank to try and get it out um, you would say put the ramp up a bit more, but as as high as it's gonna go, unfortunately, I've got very low ceilings here. I'm lucky to get it this way. To be honest with you, I think if I do another one, I'll do it on the floor, I'll jack the back end up, and then I'll just use a trolley jack. I think that makes life a hell of a lot easier. Right, let's get that centre unit out. Right, got this in this little tub. I've still got a fair bit of fuel in, in the swirl potty thing. Um, but what you need to do to access the pump is these little clips here. I've got about four or five of them either side. Um, yeah, just need to unclip them with a screwdriver and pull that bit off the bottom. But I'm going to need one and a half hands to do this one. Um, so I'm going to have to put the camera down and um, I'll pick up and I've got all apart. Right, I've got all that apart. That's a little bit fiddly, but it's not impossible. So yeah, just one, two, three, four little clips. It's like I have to get like several screwdrivers in, wedge them, and then pull it off. Um, 
Yeah, as I say, it's a little bit fiddly, and then you're sort of trying to fight that O ring as well. Uh, but apart from that, that's all off. The old filter sock, meant to be for life, but look at that. There's a grub in there, look. Don't know where that come from. But all I will say is just be careful these little tabs. They do feel brittle, although I didn't break any. I'm pretty sure I was close at some point. Right, so now, hopefully, this bit should just pull out. I think you sort of have to feed these wires through as well as you do it. Let's put it down. Let's see if I can do this one. Unclip this little plug here by looks like it. Ta da! And that is the pump pipe. Right, let me get the other one and um, this little view down there. Let me get the other one and then we'll see about how to swap it over. Right, so this is the pump. It is a AM 340 litres fuel pump supplied by AE Motorsport. Um, so this is the comparisons of it. They all look pretty much the same. The only thing that I have noticed is that the bag is a slightly different shape. So. Hopefully that will still sit in okay. If you look at that and then look at the bottom of the bowl, it looks like it. So it sits in like that. So pass. I guess we will find out in due course. If not, we'll just like use that old bag, which is not really what I do. Um, again, I've noticed that the plugs. Are different so we're gonna have to wire in the plugs um, but apart from that the pump looked pretty much the same so I'll get it all on bagged anyway and figure out what I'm gonna do and then um, come back to you all right so what I've done is I've took the decision to use the old um, filtery thing because that one didn't fit whatsoever so all I've done is I've taken the rubber anti-vibration bit out put it onto the pump I've cleaned this out with some brake cleaner some compressed air uh, so hopefully that will won't be so clogged um, I'll say clogged I don't think it's gonna be clogged is it to be honest with you um, but yeah, anyway, I put that filter on and um, the little rubber thing. So now what I'll do is swap these two plugs over. So what I'll do is I'll disconnect it from down here somewhere and um, I'll just splice into that. And then hopefully we can get it all back together again. Right, I've got this um, all apart now. So I can gain access to these two wires. There's a couple of little clips. These little white clips that you need to get two from inside there. And then that come apart this spring. Um, so I can now get to, to this bit here and pull that through and hopefully solder them connections on. Uh, which is that one there. Um, what I have noticed as well is because this plug is bigger that doesn't seat up into that tube properly and that's because there's a couple of that light on there so you can see no, I'm not having any of it 
But anyway, these bits in here, these little plastic bits, you can have to cut away at them so the pump will get up in there and the plug will actually plug on. So I'm just going to trim away that, get this connector swapped over, and then I'll come back to you then. Right, so that's all soldered up. Got some heat shrink to go over. Now I'm not 100% sure whether you can put heat shrink in with a fuel system or not, but I guess we'll find out. In this case no, that's just all good bagging falling at the bottom of the tank. And I've also cut out the the extra supports for the for the fuel pump to allow the plug to fit in. And uh, so it's just a case of just shrinking that in and putting it all back together again. So once again I'll come back to you when I've got it all back together. Right, that's that all back together again. I think what I should have done in hindsight was made the connection up here somewhere because I made it too close. So now the solder bits is like right at the top here somewhere. And you can feel that like a bit bit just a little bit on the tight side but all I did was I mated this bit to that bit made sure that was clipped in and then put the spring on and then clipped the fuel pump connector onto the top of the fuel pump and then obviously clipped this top half to the it's got some Thing there but well all I can do is give it a go and if I know that I ain't getting no fuel to the to the fuel rail at some point in its life then this is going to be the first place to to look at the solder connectors but there we go it's all back together again so I'm now going to take that over to the tank fit that back in the tank and then fit the tank up into the car I don't really need to show you all that sort of ball and stuff um, so We'll come back to you when it's all together and we're ready for a start up. Alright, that's all back in the into the tank. And I've got my fuel line connected back up again. And um, all I will say is there are some arrows. There's one on the sender unit itself, and it must line up with this mark here on the tank. Now uh, that's just purely so the sender. It's got the right place to go and also gives you where that, that pipe comes out of there. Um, and then also on that nut here, there's an arrow. Um, so when you do it up, you do it up to, to the narrow so they all line up basically so you don't over tighten it. Right, we're all back together again now. So the tank is up. Again, that's a bit of a fight getting up there, but that's up there. All the three mountain bolts are all dark tight. I've got some nice Jubilee clips on this pipe here. So, this top one here was a nightmare trying to get in that, over that stainless steel pipe. Just the pipe just seemed really small to go over to like the mushroom end, but you know, a bit of silicon spray and some brute force sorted that out. I've got all my connections done here. Let's get the light over here a bit more. All the connections to the charcoal canister are all done. All the connections to the tank is there. I did remember to put the electrical plug in um, for the sender unit. And just here you can see, I just had to do some repairs to the heat shield with some big penny washers because I'll show you on that one there look the heat shield just corroded around it um, but I only took the three off and I took one off here as well just to try and help keep it all in place so that is that so the next thing to do is just to tidy up the tools and um, bring it down and prime it to see if there's any leaks and then hopefully start it Got down the floor now, so hopefully 
if I can get in that, prime it up and just make sure it starts. Just switch the ignition on. Well, I had the fuel pump go on and off again. I don't know if you can hear that at all. There we go. So, let's see if it starts. Check for any leaks underneath the car. anything which is good lovely jubbly So that all starts and runs lovely. We'll just put it up in the air. Just have a quick final check for leaks. It's high pressure fuel, so there's going to be one that be spearing everywhere on the floor. And rise. Now that that is dry as a bone, shall we say. Right, so I think that will do it for this video. Come down again. So, in the next one, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to do the boost gauge and then hopefully make sure that all works. And then the tricky thing is, I've got to do the injectors, but also I can't drive it until it's been calibrated to them side injectors. So it's going to be a case of we're going to do the, the boost gauge, then the injectors, and then I'm going to have to literally start it, put it straight on the trailer to take to the dyno, to the tuners. So they can calibrate it and re retest the rolling road, I guess, just to see if there's any improvement, if it's solved my issues with, um, you know, run and lean and that sort of stuff. Hopefully it should do, but we will see. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut you off here. We're going to do a couple of smaller episodes. So I guess this one will be slightly smaller than the last one. And then injectors, that ain't going to take me long, so that'll probably be a like five or ten minute long video. And the boost gauge is going to be exactly the same, five or ten minute video. Um, and then hopefully we can get down to the to the dyno and I can show you a bit more involved in what's going on with that. So we'll see you in the next one.